Hey, Shamika. Hey, Belinda. Can y'all hear the music? And is it too low, too loud? Well, Okay, great. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true. I want to be holy for God's use. I want to be prepared to be used by Him. I want to find myself always available because when I call Him, He's always there. So when He calls me, I want to always be there. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you all being on here again, once again, for the Sunday School Live with yours truly. And we constantly thank, I constantly thank God for each and every one of you who take time out of your busy schedule. And this being uh, Thanksgiving week, take time out of your busy schedule to tune in and be a part of because this is something I love. I love to teach Sunday School. I love God's Word. You know, my mom always told me, oh, I always thought you was going to be a teacher. I said, um, nope. Because, you know, I can't, I, I, my nerves are not good enough for the school system. But I can teach right here. And I'm good and I can teach Sunday school to adults. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, we thank God for that. But we're going to get right into our lesson. But you know how I do it. I always start with prayer. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this night. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for all the wonderful things that you've done for us, all the many blessings you've bestowed upon us, Lord. Thank you for waking us up this morning and 
sending us on our way or if we're on vacation, how you allowed us to just relax and in the safety of our own homes because we know that our homes are covered with, by your blood, covered with your love, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for keeping us from all hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you for keeping us from danger seen and unseen, Lord. Uh, Lord, I ask that you be with the two children that were just recently hit, uh, no more than about 10 or 15 minutes ago, uh, here in Shreveport, 10 and 12 years old, they're on the way to the hospital. They should be at the hospital by now, but Lord, I know you can go there and touch right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, heal their bodies, Lord. Bring them back, Lord. Bring them back this way, baby. They're just babies, and they haven't had long enough to deal, to enjoy life and have fun, Lord. Touch right now. Touch the families, Lord. Strengthen them as they deal with this ordeal, Lord Jesus. We ask that you go with us in this lesson, Lord. Be with us. Stand by us, Lord Jesus. Help us to understand your word because we're preparing for Christmas and these lessons will be leading up to your birth, the essence of your birth, the time of your birth. Lord, we thank you for coming down and on earth to bring us back to God, to redeem us back to God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for allowing your son to come down and die for us. Lord, we thank you for all the many blessings. Lord, we thank you for Almost the close of another year, Lord. We thought we'd never see it, but you brought us all the way. Lord, as I teach your lesson on tonight, speak through these lips of clay the words that you would have me to say. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, strength and redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen. We thank God for this lesson on tonight. And truly, we're in another series. And this series is called Prelude to Discipleship. This is like what's, what's going to happen before Jesus starts calling his disciples, but we got to bring Jesus on the scene. And you know, every time around Christmas, I don't care whose church you're in or whatever was going on, if you have a Sunday school book, if you have some lessons, they're going to always switch and go and change up to the um, to Christmas and talk about the birth of Jesus. Hey, Charlene, that's what happens all the time. So we know that when December comes, you know we're going to be talking about the baby Jesus. And some of them said to my, oh, come on, baby Jesus. So I was like, come on, baby Jesus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jesus grew up to a grown man and did some miracle. Why we want to keep him as a baby? He didn't do nothing when he was a baby. He was a grown man. Well, I will talk about that on the next channel, whatever channel that be. But I'm just talking. But anyway, we were talking about prelude, prelude to discipleship. And then the lesson for tonight is the prophecy of Jesus' birth. And we know there was... So there was some prophecy in the Old Testament that talked about his birth, that he was going to come. And, you know, he was coming this way unto us, a child is born, unto us, a son is given. That's in Isaiah. You know, it was going to be, it was going to happen, you know. So now the, the plan is, um, the, the Old Testament talks about it. Now it's going to bring it to the New Testament. So, you know, these are lessons that are repeated over and over again. It's time for, uh, do, they do, do they still do Christmas speeches, I think I don't remember. It's been a long time since I did a speech. I don't know, so me. But anyway, we're going to be talking from Luke, the first chapter, uh, starting at the 26th verse. First chapter, first chapter of Luke, starting at the 26th verse, and we're going to go through the 38th verse, okay? All right. <clears throat> it says... And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin and spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Now, it says, and in the sixth month, what sixth month? Okay. And so let's go back up. Who are we talking about in the 24th verse? Elizabeth had hid herself. How many months? Five. Thus had the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Now, those of you who may not know, you should know. But those of you who may not know, Elizabeth is John. John the Baptist. Yeah, that one. John. Elizabeth wasn't no young chick. She was a senior citizen, if I may use the term loosely. And God allowed her to have a baby. And that baby was a boy. And in the sixth month, that's her sixth month. That's what I mean by the sixth month. The sixth month of her, of Elizabeth carrying John the Baptist. Then Jesus, I mean the angel showed up to Mary. And she was a spouse. She was engaged to, you know, Joseph. 
Mm -hmm. And he was of the lineage of David. Mm -hmm. So in order for Jesus to keep his kingship, his royal lineage, he came through the house of David. Because why? David was a man after God's own heart. And God established the land. The 42 generations. Yeah, I, I don't know if anybody ever broke that down. They always preach. And then Jesus came down through 42 generations. Do they ever say what the 42 generations are? Okay, do, do, do you know? I don't know. Look that up. I was going to tell you. I'm, look that up. Let's see if you can tell me in a comment after this lesson. What was the first 14? The second 14? And then the third 14? Look that up for me. And then comment it right here. Right, right in the comments, okay? You gonna do that for me? If you don't come back here, yeah, I'm gonna have to tell y'all the next episode. Okay, what the 42 generations look. I know some of y'all ain't gonna do it right yet. Some of y'all gonna cheat. I'm gonna allow you to. Like, I'm gonna allow you to Google it. I'm gonna allow you to look it up in the Bible. But okay, but how you get it? Just tell me. Okay, okay. You can either cut and paste. <laughs> okay. But anyway, tell me what those 42 generations were. And so, this virgin's name was Mary. Once removed, twice gone. Okay, what's a virgin? Y'all know what a virgin is? Remember? Way back before, you dipped in the cool, in the Kool-Aid, in the water, and <laughs> dipped in. Okay. Alright, so that's what a virgin is. She has, has not known a man, has not touched man, touched, man's name touched her, no. So, when in this day, that day, when they were engaged, with no shacking, with no staying together, with no you move in with me until we decide we want to get married. Uh uh. She stayed at her mama and daddy's house, and he stayed at his his house or mama daddy's house, whatever it was. And back in them days, the the dude that wanted the married girl paid a dowry, paid some money to the parents or the daughter. So this this, this what I'm gonna do? Or did he ain't had no money with some cattle or whatever? But it was some type of diary he paid. And so while he paid that, there was a certain amount of time. Okay, you gonna do this? You got that? All right, now stay over there until you ready to come to come with her and come together with her. And then we'll see what happens next. It ain't like it is today. We have 14, 15 cheering, and then we say, Oh yeah, let's get okay. Maybe it's time for us to get married. You think? But anyway, they they, they didn't do all that back then. You know, folks just don't want to do it the Bible way too many times. I'm just talking. I'm just saying what the Bible says. It talks about husband and wives. It don't talk about shacking and whacking and going on there. Hey, Lanita. It don't talk about all that. So, you know, but it, we talking about Mary and Joseph. They weren't in the same house until they got married. But anyway, we're going to move on with that. It says, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. This is what the angel told Mary. This is Gabriel. This, this, is, a, this is the messenger angel. Gabriel is the messenger angel. Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. She's highly favored. You know how we like to say, blessed and highly favored. Did you do this? Did you carry Jesus? And you blessed and you failed. Blessed and highly favored this. Okay, that was attached to her. I'm just saying, you know, we like to feel deep and important, you know. I'm blessing the highly favor. And then sometimes I ask how. Okay, I'm sorry. I do. I, I'm like, how you got the favor? What the Lord did? Talk to me. I'm asking for a testimony. I ain't trying to t play, play, play with you. Because know? some people say stuff because other folks say it. And, you know, sometimes I might pull a card and say, what, what you mean, girl? What's going on in your life? What's, girl, what the Lord doing for you? What you mean? He won't be up. No, that, that's not. Uh, come on, talk to him. What's the favor? What? Where the highly favor that? Talk to him. I want to see if you're talking about what you're talking about. Don't start a testimony that can't finish. Okay. I'm sorry. Hey, I did it again. Okay. Okay, Belinda. I'm sorry. Blessed are thou among women. Why? We finna find out. She's blessed. She's about to make a carry. Ain't nobody before her. Ain't nobody after her made this kind of carry without the earthly help. All right. Hey, Elder Washington. It said, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and casting on mind what manner of salutation this should be. 
Okay, she's sitting there chilling, ain't bothered with nobody, ain't thinking about nothing. She's just thinking about, you know, well, she's thinking about some stuff at the house, and she's thinking about, oh, I'm about to be married to Joseph. He a good dude. He going to take care of me. He going to love me for the rest of my little life. And then the angel telling her, you, <laughs> you come and you highly fade late. Who? What you talking, what you, I mean, where, where you come from? What, what you mean I'm highly favored? And what you talking about? What you saying? But the angel said unto Mary, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Thou hast found favor. God that looked and chose Mary. He said, you, the angel said, you have found favor with God. Who are you? Have you found favor with God? Do you have the favor of God? Do you carry his blood? Do you carry his, his countenance? Do you carry his spirit? Do you carry, do you carry anything that has anything to do with it? Huh? But he said you have found favor with God. God has looked upon you. God has looked upon your life. God has chosen you. You are the one for him. You are the one he wants to choose. You are going to do this job for him. Do you have the favor of God in your life? Okay, I'll just ask you. Just, you got to be sure. Because you, when you have favor with God, you have favor with God and man. God will start dealing with man to deal with you. Because you have favor with God. How do you get favor with God? It's not just something you jump up with. Now, you can jump up with God's mercy and God's grace. But favor, you have to stand in the line to get the favor of God. You have to be obedient. You have to do what he says. You have to be in line in accordance with his word to get his favor. Who is it? Say favor ain't fair. It ain't. But the one who got it is awesome. Thank you, Lord. It says, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Wait. Okay. What you say? Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Okay, that means I'm finna get pregnant. And then you're gonna tell me I'm gonna have a son. And then you're gonna tell me I gotta call him Jesus. And then you say he's gonna be great, he's gonna be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord gonna give unto him the throne of his father David. What you mean? Okay, David, the dude that the dude that was sitting on the throne, the dude that got the kingdom after Saul, the, Solomon Dad. That you what I'm talking about? You, what you talking about? I don't what? Okay, look, okay, my alright, hold on, hold on, hold on. And the angel kept talking, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, Hold up, dude. Wait. You tone out. Because I know how this thing works. To have a baby, there needs to be a man and a woman. They need to come together, do what they do, and then a baby comes. But you talking about all this going to happen, and who? How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man, I ain't done nothing yet. I got my husband over, my my fiance, he over there at his house. We waiting, and we gonna do this thing after the marriage. But you talking about all of a sudden? What do what you do? You better you better fix this, cause my daddy see me like this, and then Joseph show like this. You we they gonna be like, Mary, what you been doing? Mm-hmm. What you do? Well, okay. He said, hold on. Wait, this house going to help. Ain't nobody going to touch it. But I promise, when the Lord just, he, you going to, okay, anyway, so I'm going to explain in a minute. I'm just going to. And said, the angel said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, what the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. The Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And the Holy Ghost and the highest, the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Ain't going to touch you at all. That miraculous thing, that thing, that, that inception, that immaculate inception that's going to happen will be the work of God 
and the Holy Ghost. You remember in the first in the beginning how it was the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. Oh, you remember that? But in this instance, we lose the, the son entity because he's coming to the earth. So we got to do the double work of the Holy Ghost and the highest. And this thing will be. Now we know that God made our bodies. God knows everything that's inside. He know where it go. He know what it do. He know what makes it function. He know what shuts it down. So all he got to do is do what he needs to do to do what needs to be happening. Now let me explain something to you. Now if Jesus, Jesus was supposed to be a perfect sacrifice. He was supposed to be sinless. No sin found in his body. Now you know Abraham, I'm sorry, Adam and Eve committed sin and that killed mankind spiritually. But in order for Jesus to keep his purity, meaning that no man, no man could enter the equation. Because if it had been Joseph that he worked through, that body would have been contaminated. He would have had that sinful nature. But all the mother provides is the mitochondrial DNA. That means there's some makeup that we can kind of tell who the mother is. But by the blood and the DNA, we could always tell who the father is. And in this essence, Joseph could no way be the father and Jesus be whole. So that's why it's called the immaculate inception. It means it wasn't done by man's hands. It wasn't done by the instrument of man. It was done by the overshadow and the power of overcoming of God and the Holy Ghost. God did what he needed to do so that Jesus could keep his purity and be the perfect sacrifice. Because if it had to come any kind of way, it would have been stained by that sinful nature. And then Jesus could come here doing whatever, whatever, however. But because Jesus allowed this virgin to bring this child into the world, then he had a stage that had to be set in order for this to be the perfect birth. All right? Okay. It said, and behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. We know about Elizabeth. She had uh, that husband named Zacharias. And so, you know, he was trying to, yeah, I'm finna have me a boy. And we're gonna do this. We, yeah, but they told me I'm gonna have a boy. Yeah, wait a minute, what you gonna have a boy? <laughs> wait till you, 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 we gonna have some, which man has. Because of his unbelief. He couldn't talk no more. Sometimes we, you, you say you want God to do something. I know he can do it, but. I pray to the Lord, but. Uh -uh, if you're going to worry, don't pray. If you're going to pray, don't worry. If you got doubts, if you got faith, roll with it. But you got to believe what God is going to do. God say, what he say he's going to do, he's going to do just that. You ain't got to worry about when Jesus said, when God said, what? Did Build on it, bank on it. What you, what? It said, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing. This woman was older. She was barren. She couldn't have no cheerness. And she was sad. But when she found out she was pregnant, she was happy. And then she found out she was having a boy. Oh, my God. Because when them angels showed up, they tell you what you're going to have and when you're going to have. And when it's going to happen. By this time next season, you're going to have a boy. By this time next season, you're going to have a boy. It's like, okay, what? okay. <laughs> All right, then. Next thing she knows, she's praying. She's like, hold on. Wait a minute. Oh, let me, let me, let me stay in the cut for about five, five months because I ain't, you know, I don't know because people going to be like, Good, yeah, right, uh-huh, you pregnant, whatever, yeah, mm -hmm. So, she hid herself for five months, and then she come on out there, oh, Elizabeth was serious, she really is pregnant. Yay, that's so sweet, that's blessed. It says, and Mary said, behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. See? The prophecy of Jesus' birth. It's already, it was already happening. And then it came to be. He found a birth to have to bring this child into the world. 
And don't you know, because he knew she was engaged to Joseph, he, the Lord knew Joseph was all right too. Because he knew she couldn't bring that baby to the world by herself. We do that nowadays. We just all willy-nilly with it and we had children, whatever. whatever. Then we get mad at the dude. Why you get mad at the dude? You knew he he wasn't by now. If he got 12 children already, why do you think he going to take care of yours, number 13? Explain that to me. I'm just trying to understand. But see, Joseph was a special kind of man. And God knew that if he saw Mary, he wasn't going to do no harm. He wasn't going to cause her no harm. He wasn't going to act a fool. He was going to do what he needed to do. Because y'all know, Jesus was the firstborn. But he wasn't the only child. But see, that, one, that that Jesus was special, though. He's special. So we're talking about Jesus' birth. And we know, like I said earlier, when it comes to Christmas time, you know we're going to talk about him being born. And Easter, we're going to put him on the cross. Some churches put him on the cross every Sunday. I said, Lord, do you get tired of dying every Sunday? He said, well, baby, you know, that's, just, that's how they want to do. And I said, Lord, why y'all putting the Jesus on the cross every Sunday? But anyway, Jesus' birth, I'm glad that Jesus wanted to be my sacrifice and redeem me back to God. What about you? I thank God that he sent his only son, only son, to die for me. I thank God for his very life. I thank God that he allowed me another life. And you should be thankful too. That God came down, Jesus came down, and sacrificed his life, went through hell to get us to hell. What a God. Amen. All right. I do not have a listen for next week. I forgot to record it and write it down, and my paper is somewhere over there. But anyway, you know, I'll get it to you. We still talking about Jesus, bro. You know, I got it on my on this tablet somewhere. So, but anyway. I use it prepare, but we're gonna still be in uh, the Luke one, and I think we're gonna continue on starting at the thirty ninth verse. But you know, I'll put it up. You know, I'll put it on my page, the lessons, and then y'all can get them since y'all don't ask for them. And why you don't, I don't understand. But anyway, I'll post it on my page, and then you can get it from there. No, I'm posted here. I'm not gonna post it on my personal page. I'm posted right here. Now next week. All right, I'm trying to remind y'all, next week, we're going to YouTube. We're not going to be here next week. We are going to YouTube. We're going to test the waters on YouTube, okay? We're going to go live on YouTube. Tell everybody, don't come here. Unless they come later, then, you know, I'll, I'll upload it here later on. But next week, we're going to YouTube, okay? Love y'all so much. Thank y'all for everything. Keep praying for me that I keep on teaching this word. All right. God bless you and God keep you. Till next time.